So I've been shooting cap and ball pistols now for almost 20 years, and I've only ever had two chain fires. And the first one was in an 1858 Remington, and the second one was in my Colt Walker here. Now, I wanted to do a test on the max load and what kind of velocities you can get with the cap and ball cylinder because I typically shoot it with the cartridge conversion cylinder over here on the right, and that's what I prefer. But I haven't spent a lot of time shooting this thing with the cap and ball cylinder, so I wanted to do a test. And uh, right off the bat, it just it just wasn't going well. Uh, my chronograph was giving me ridiculous numbers. It said it was going like Mach 4 or something at like 8,200 feet per second. Um, I don't typically shoot uh, with wads. Uh, I use grease over the chamber mouths, and I forgot my grease. You can see it in this picture here. This is for another video I'm making, and the little tin uh, or the little container of grease is right there, which I left at home. So um, I thought, you know, well, I'm going to load up five of them with 55 grains. You know, it, it, it should be fine, and uh, it, it wasn't. So... Um, but luckily, uh, the no harm done, uh, as we like to say, ain't nothing hurt but my pride. So here it is. 55 grains of 3F Swiss and a round ball. Try that again. <laughs> I'm standing there, I'm like, is that 1900? Because that doesn't make any sense either. No, no, it's 7900. metric or something what the f So the moral of this story is, if you're going to shoot cap and ball pistols, you need to be using a felt wad on top of the powder and under the ball, or greasing the chamber mouths after the ball is seated. Well, I, I suppose you could do both if you wanted to be extra safe. But I can tell you in my experience in the 19 years that I've been shooting cap and ball pistols, the two times that I haven't done one of those two things, I've had a chain fire. So. Keep that in mind. <laughs>